good morning. So good to see you today. Let's stand together. Welcome. Let's sing 10,000 Reasons. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. Son. so good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. Bright, smiley faces. I like it. I like it. Maybe it's the rain that's uh, come in and brightened our, our week up. I hope so. And so uh, hopefully you got some of that. I know it's been really sporadic uh, in some places, but others not so much. So how many of you guys got at least a little bit of rain this week? Show of hands. All right. See, there we go. Thank you, Lord, for all of that blessing. And uh, we wanted to let you know, if you are a guest with us this morning, there's a guest card there in the, in the pew in front of you. If you'll fill that out and drop that in the offering plate when it's passed here in just a little bit. We're grateful you are here this morning. Uh, we wanted to let you know about uh, some of the things going on. You can turn to your worship guide and see some of those things as we uh, seek to connect and, uh, and just allow our folks to get involved in various ways. Of course, tonight for our youth, we've got the pool party from... 5 to 7 p.m. over at the T Arenas, and uh, you can also see that we've got uh, uh, two or three classes coming up uh, where you can get involved. The men's and women's Bible studies are coming up, and both of those are available on the new app that we uh, put out last week, and you can also see that information in the bulletin. Uh, and so if you would download that app, you can, you can actually register for those classes. And actually, uh, the new members class will be on there tomorrow. And so if for some reason you don't get signed up out in the foyer today, you can do it that way uh, tomorrow. And just wanted to let you uh, know about that one. 
Uh, our Wednesday meals will be starting back up this week, 5 o'clock, and then our youth and children's activities uh, from 6 to 7.30 uh, started up this past week. We had a great turnout, a great time. Uh, we're going to be posting some videos later today, and, uh, and don't hold me responsible for any, uh, any edema on the, on the face from any tortilla slapping that might have gone on in the, in the youth department. Uh, there was a, if you don't know what I'm talking about, we had the tortilla challenge going on in the youth department this past Wednesday. And uh, so take it all in good fun when you do see those, and, and when you think, what in the world is that? Just think of me, and then you'll go, oh, well, that, that figures. So uh, anyway, just wanted to let you know about some of those things coming up. Be sure to uh, take notice of the envelope that is also in your worship guide this morning uh, for Mary Hill uh, Texas Missions offering, and just be aware of how you can, uh, and just be praying of how the Lord would lead you uh, to give towards um, the mission endeavors within our own state and uh, I know that God's going to use those things uh, to, to bless those who are working diligently in the area of missions. Well, at this time, we'd like to stand and greet each other in the love of the Lord.
shall be showers of blessing. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing. Sit from the Savior of chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 1, and just so you know, we're just going to read one verse, well, one sentence in the Greek, it's going to be a bunch of verses, but that's the way it is. Would you stand in honor of God's Word? We're going to read the second longest sentence in the Greek New Testament this morning. It's always good. Now, hey, Tim mentioned Mary Hill Davis, and we haven't talked a lot about that uh, leading up to it, but I just want to mention real quick, Mary Hill Davis is one of those mission offerings in which every dollar goes to missions in the state of Texas, and with all these people moving from California. <laughs> Thank you. That's a little slow, man. That's a little slow. Oh, okay, I see, I see. But no, seriously, you got to realize that the population of Waco, Texas, moves moves to the state every single year, and more and more of them are lost. And it's uh, giving through uh, Mary Hill Davis is an effective way of joining with other church partners in order to reach the lost in this state. So I want to encourage you to be about that and to pray and give as God would lead you to. So we're in Ephesians chapter 1, and we're going to read verses 15 through 23. And like I said in the Greek, it's one sentence. So here we go. For this reason I too, having heard of the faith in the Lord Jesus, which exists among you and your love for all the saints, do not cease giving thanks for you, while making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of Him. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you will know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the surpassing greatness of his power toward us who believe? These are 
These are in accordance with the working of the strength of his might, which he brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly place, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the, age, the one to come. And he put all things in subjection under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Let us pray. Father God, you are awesome, mighty, and good. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you have made a way for us to know you through your Son, Jesus, by the power of your Spirit, Lord. Father, let us not be those who take lightly the privilege of knowing you more each day. Let us be drawn closer to you, wanting to dig deeper into your word, to spend more time in prayer with you. Lord, give us a passion, a passion for you in all your things. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's remain standing. When we pray, God can do even what we think is impossible. Nothing is impossible with Him. Isn't that good? Good to know that God can do anything He wants to help us, to encourage us. Let's sing to God. They say this mountain can be moved. They say these chains will never break. But they don't know you like power in your name. We've heard that there is no way through. We've heard the tide will never change. They haven't seen what you can do. There is power
what we believe for it from the impossible we'll see a miracle god we with us and he gives us the strength that we need let's sing together never once never once has he left us alone or deserted us he's always with us always cares about us always loves us even when we're unloving going to come and he's going to lead us in our time of prayer as we give our tithes and offerings. John. Let us pray. Father, come before you this morning. Thankful for all the blessings you've given us. Father, and the greatest blessing you give us is your grace and love and your faithfulness. It, it, Father, it sustained us in our time of need and, and Father, we, are, we can always have a, a, a bright outlook on the future when we look to you and pray to you and, and, and seek your guidance and wisdom in everything we do. Because, Father, we do have a better day coming at the end of our life. And we do thank you for that. And we thank you for sending Jesus Christ to die for us on the cross. Father, be with, with uh, Nicole as she 
leads a, leads, has a uh, message in song for us this morning. Bless her as she sings it, and, and let, it be, let it stir our emotions toward you and in the song she sings. All these things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. you. May be seated. As John mentioned in his prayer, Nicole's going to come and share with us now. When the best of me is barely breathing, when I'm not somebody I believe in, hold on to me. When I miss the light the night has stolen, when I'm slamming all the, the doors you've opened, hold on to me. chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 1. Paul is writing to the church in Ephesus and the surrounding churches, and some have said that, that he's a little generic in what he prays for, but he's also quite specific in the importance of spiritual growth, the importance of growing in our knowledge and faith of God. So in Christ, we Pray to know Him more. If we are in Christ today, we should desire to know Him more. And I, you know, every once in a while, every, every once in a while, I know this is going to blow you away, but I'll have somebody, oh, we know all that. Oh, we've, we've been in church longer than you've been alive, Pastor. i got underwear older than you. That sounds terrible. But there were some wives that just elbowed some men, so we're good. I don't need more Bible study. I don't need more Sunday school. I'm going to tell you something. You may not need the quote-unquote more Bible study in Sunday school. You need more Jesus. Because in this day and age, we have more influence upon us for our attentions that distract us from the beauty of Jesus. You see... Since somebody brought up those wonderful Methodists, pray for them. Their pops got broke this morning early. 
It ain't no fun when you ain't got water at church. Hopefully they got it fixed in time. Listen, tr- tr- uh, sorry, not Charles Wesley, his brother, but uh, Wesley was an itinerant preacher. He would travel all over England, well, wherever he would go, and he'd go from place to place to preach publicly. And in route, on those horses, you know what he'd do? He'd read his Bible. He would write his sermons. He would think on the things of Jesus. He did not have earbuds. He didn't have XM radio. He didn't have all this stuff to get in the way. You see, we, we pray to know him more. I pray for you this day that you will know Jesus more. There is no greater desire. And you can hear the pastoral heart of Paul in this passage when he prays that they would truly know Jesus Christ in his fullness. Do you pray that? Do you pray that you would know Christ more? I mean, way, all, way too often our prayers consist of praying for ourselves in the sense of, I want to be healthy, wealthy, and great. Or maybe you pray in for the health, wealth, and somebody else in your life. And those, are, those can be good things. But notice that Paul, when he prays for them, as we get into this text, he's not praying for you to have an easy life. He's not praying for them to be rich and wealthy. He's praying for them to know Jesus more. So let's jump in the text and see what we can glean from this one sentence in the Greek. It takes five to do it in English. And whew, yeah, it's, it's fun. All right, so here we go. Verse 15, it says, For this reason, I too, for this reason. He's just talked about how the Father planned for their day of salvation, how Jesus paid the price for redemption with his blood, and how the Holy Spirit sealed us into the day of redemption. For this reason, I too, having heard of the faith in having heard of the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, which exists among you, and your love for all the saints. So he starts right out, and he and to do, I'm sorry, verse 16, and do not cease giving thanks for you. Kind of break it up just a little bit more there. Do not cease giving thanks for them, and that he's heard what? He's heard that the faith exists amongst them. There's new believers that he does not know personally that he hadn't met. He probably hadn't been there in five years, so many have been saved. And he also expresses their love for all the saints. He is praying partially a prayer of thanksgiving, a prayer of gratitude for the great foundation of, for spiritual growth. Oh, some of you are gardeners in this room. And, and from time to time, I get some wonderful maters and some other goodies from different folks. And some of you got brown thumbs, so you just won't understand, and it's okay. But here's the thing. In order to grow spiritually, there should be a firm foundation, a foundation that sets the stage for, for growth of a garden. What do you got to have? You got to have a couple of things. You've got to have good soil. You've got to have water. You've got to have the proper amount of sunlight and rain. I'm going to go there for a minute because there is a such thing as too much sunlight. Whew. Man, my yard looks so funny right now. There's green, black, not sure what that color is, but you know what I'm saying. But the ground had to be prepared for it to grow. And Paul, as he's praying for them to know Jesus more, he lays it out there showing that, and he's thanking God that there is a firm foundation there. There is a foundation for growth. Having heard of your faith that that exists amongst you. Their faith in Jesus Christ. You see, you're never going to go spiritually if you don't know Jesus. That's number one. If you don't have a strong trust in Jesus, you're never going to grow. It's really hard to want a desire to study God's Word if you truly do not know Him, if you have not experienced the power and forgiveness of Jesus Christ. It's hard to go down that road. But we also see within this community of saints a love for all the saints. Boy, didn't didn't Jesus say something about that? You will know they're my disciples by their love for one another. How they love all the saints. How they they care about everyone around them. That's a sign of, 
that, that's a fruit of the Spirit, right? We'll talk about that in a few weeks, but there's a soft, malleable, prepared heart where there is faith and love in the community of God's people. It starts right there. You see, if you're in a church, and we're not there, praise the Lord, where there's infighting and there's division and, and there's, there's, there's cliques and there's groups and all of this, it makes it really difficult to love one another and to grow in our faith. But when there's a strong faith in the Lord and there's a strong love for one another, a strong attitude for serving, there you have the perfect elements for a great foundation for spiritual growth in Christ Jesus, to know Jesus more. You see, when there's backbiting, fussing, gossip, and any of all that crazy stuff, a lack of love for one another, it's really difficult for people to grow and come and not be paying attention to the things that they shouldn't. So we see that, that if we're going to know him more, we start with a good foundation. I think we're pretty good right now. I think we really are. We're probably, we probably as strong in fellowship and love as we've been in a long time. Post, Post-COVID, it's been pretty good in that area. We see some development in those things. And it's a wonderful sight. We see the ground prepared. He doesn't cease in giving thanks. Now, we know that this is a figure of speech. He doesn't, he's not constantly praying for them, but he regularly prays for them and thanks God for where they're at. While making mention of you in my prayers, that the God, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you a spirit of wisdom and revelation and of revelation in the knowledge of him. It can also be translated the spirit, as in not a spirit, but the spirit, the Holy Spirit that resides within us, of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. We are to pray for spiritual empowerment for greater knowledge of Jesus. Praying for spiritual empowerment. You know, that's the saddest thing to me. The saddest thing in the world is to pull up to a red light and to see one of those beautiful, beautiful Corvettes or even a pretty black Camaro convertible. And they drive off the line like they're in a Yugo or one of them little smart cars. You got all that horsepower. And it just drives me nuts when people don't use it. Man, I tell you what, I'm going to be fastest from gas station to gas station and not think twice of it. Mm. You know, if those of y'all don't think in terms of cars, I'm going to go trucks instead. It's like these people who buy these giant four by fours and never go mudding. What's the point? That's what a four by four was designed for. And if your daddy owns a dump truck, you should take out a fence. No, you got to use what you got. You, do you realize that God has instilled in each and every one of us who are in Christ the Holy Spirit of God to teach us, to guide us, to wreck us, to give us the words to speak. And so many Christians, they don't ever use it. They, they don't ever press the gas pedal to take advantage of the living God that resides within them. You know, and, I, and I'm just going to go ahead and say it, you know, there, there, is, there is an importance of intellectual knowledge of God that must grow and we must be in the spirit to truly understand it and to apply it to our lives. Okay? There are so many Christians and it's so obvious from survey after survey who are not taking advantage of the Lord with wisdom, the spirit of wisdom, and revelation. Who aren't digging into God's word. They're kind of going, eh, I'll believe a little of this, and I'll believe a little of that, and I'll sprinkle some of this just in case. But I'm going to leave all this hard stuff over there. That hurts my head. Maybe it doesn't hurt your head. Maybe it just hurts your feelings because it doesn't fit your certain 
certain current social circumstances. It definitely doesn't fit the world around us. More and more evangelical Christians, Baptists, believe that there are more than one way to go to heaven. The Bible says there's only one way. More and more evangelical Christians do not see the Word of God as truth in its entirety. It's a sad day when we see such things. Listen, we, we, we pray that the Spirit will empower us to greater knowledge, to reveal to us greater knowledge and understanding of the Scriptures. And not only that, God gave people into the church to help explain and to help teach those things. You know why we have Sunday school? Because we like donuts. <laughs> or pancakes. Oh, goodness. By the way, don't worry about feeding your kids on Sunday, on Sunday morning. Tim has set up the Pancake Express for those guys over there. It is wonderful. <sighs> I'm suffering right now from it. <laughs> it's so that we'll grow to know Christ more. So that we can live and serve faithfully approved. It's, it's why we, we spend all this time asking people to, to put together Bible studies. You know, we got a women's Bible study starting, um, I think it's September 11th, right over there in that fellowship hall. Ladies, I, I, I'm going to tell you something. If you ain't got going on Sunday night, which you probably don't, there's very little going on. Your husband's watching a football game anyway. Why? Go, go and join Melissa. She works real hard to put that together and plan it so that you can grow in your faith so that you may know the Lord more. And I'll tell you what, the, the, just a couple of days later, I'm starting my men's study again. We'll be there, 7 o'clock. I hope to see you there. And every once in a while, I'm just going to tell you this, at the end, somebody shows up with a bunch of pulled pork. Might be something different this time, but it was just, just telling you. But we need to grow in our faith. We need to use it. We need to know the living God. So, so the times this don't always work as easy as we'd like, but they can. We can make these things happen. Praying for spiritual empowerment to have greater knowledge in Christ, but also taking advantage of it. You know, don't ever think you can somehow exhaust your knowledge of God. There will not be a way. You know that commercial where the guy's sitting in front of his computer and he says, Oh, wow. His wife says, What? I made it to the end of the internet. Listen, not only can we not run out of not things to learn about God in this day and age, I guarantee you throughout eternity we won't get it all down. Because our God is too big to put in a box, but we should want to learn and know Him more every single day. To take advantage of the Spirit of God that resides within us so that we may know him. We may know him more in every way. Verse 18, he says, I pray that the, uh, that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you... Mm. And pancakes talking. Mm. Forgive me. I'm all dry all of a sudden. Here you go. <clears throat> so that you may know what his may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power toward those who believe. I pray that the eyes of your heart may open, may be enlightened. This is the earliest known use of that phrase in all of Greek literature the history of because there's there is something deeper than just a head knowledge about god oh you need head knowledge because you know what head knowledge keeps us from doing chasing our emotions and trying to twist god's word to suit an emotional feeling but heart knowledge 
when we take it to heart who God is and we, 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 we see him so deeply with passion. In fact, this is that kind of, that kind of idea, that, 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 that intimate knowledge of knowing them deeply and more personally. We should pray for a greater heart knowledge in every way. See, it says here, so that you may know what is the hope of his calling. Now, sometimes we grab a hold of that word hope, and, you know, I'm going to look at you right now, and y- y'all have seen the weather. It's really not supposed to rain before when? Tuesday, right? Monday night? Oh, come on, I ain't got a meteorologist in the room. But you know what? I hope it rains this afternoon, but it seems to avoid my house for some reason, Okay. I ain't praying enough. That's what it is. But I hope. Do I know it will? I've seen the forecast. It shouldn't, right? Sometimes I hope, but it's more of a wishing. That's kind of an English way of understanding hope. In the Greek, yeah, it had that connotation, but more often than not, and especially in the context of our calling in Jesus Christ, it is a certainty. A certainty in our calling no matter what our circumstances are whether we're rich poor or somewhere in between whether we're healthy or just kind of broken but you just endure and go to church anyway the hope of our calling is the certainty that one day jesus is coming back to complete the task he started in us we should we should open our eyes the uh, the eyes of our heart, to the enlightenment of knowing it more. Because when we're confident in our calling that God has called us to, there is nothing that can stand in our way. For calling will keep us focused in the darkest of times, in the hardest of situations. What are the riches? I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. You may not realize this, but, but the people of God have been, been shared in the Old Testament as God's inheritance. The glory of God's inheritance. Now there's a sense in this that you can go and talk about our inheritance that we'll receive in heaven with him. But the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. In the saints, the holy ones of God. That's you and me. That's the church. We live in a day and age that has devalued the bride of Christ, that has lessened the value of of church gatherings. I could show you an inbox, which I try not to check. Robert will tell you that. Full of all these people who are going to tell me all the tricks to getting people back in church post-COVID. Because it's universal, folks. The struggles and the problems of getting people back motivated back focused upon the worship of Jesus. But if I want to have a greater heart knowledge, it's knowing the value of my church family. It's loving my church folks, anticipating and looking forward to the fellowship of one another. I'm going to tell you, if you weren't here last Sunday night, you missed out. Mm -mm -mm. It was good. I found out some favorite colors of some people. I found out some strange favorite songs, secular-wise. But I got to enjoy time with God's people. The fellowship is important. Being with one another is more important than you think. Oh, well, well, I don't have to be a Christian and go to church. No, you don't have to be a Christian and be in a church building, but you if to want to be a Christian, you need to be in fellowship with other believers. That means you have to assemble together at some point for discipleship, Bible study, and growth. The 
But in our day and age, we have made gathering with the saints less desirable than vacations and pillow time. We have made the church. Yes, we all know the days back in the old days where you were ridiculed if you missed one Sunday. That was foolish, wasn't it? But now we've swung the whole other way. We've swung the whole other way where church is an occasional thing that we do because as long as it doesn't get into the way of all these other things I want to be about. Pray for a greater heart knowledge of Jesus Christ. And in so doing so, based on our calling, we will value being with the people of God on a regular basis and knowing them thoroughly oh but there's one more here there's there's one more and it's a it's a goodie pray to know the power of god and his resurrection glory his resurrection power power oh come on Have you experienced the resurrection power of Jesus? Have you ever been so close with the Lord you couldn't help but to scream, to shout? See, we pick on our Pentecostal brethren who struggle on the theology side, but they don't miss it with the encouragement, passion, and raising, I don't want to say raising hands, we're in a Baptist church, but I'm going to say it. Because they allow the Spirit to stir and to experience the, the jubilation, the excitement of what is experiencing the living God. When was the last time you got fired up about something you read during your quiet time? Maybe something you heard a preacher say as you were listening to it on the way to work. When was the last time you got so fired up you stopped and you rewound it and listened to it again? And then when you got to work, you called somebody to make sure that they knew because it meant that much. Because I'm going to tell you, receiving a good word from the Lord should just make us feel awesome, empowered. Listen to what he says. He says, all these things. Things And he says, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power toward us? You see that word? Toward, it's two words. Toward us who believe. Well, how does he describe it? He doesn't describe it as moving mountains. He doesn't describe it as, as, as moving the tides. He doesn't describe it as stand, making the sun stand still. He describes it. In relation to the resurrection of Jesus Christ, these are in accordance to the workings of the strength of his might, which he brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in heavenly places. Did you catch that? In accordance with the working of the strength of his might, which he brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Do you remember when you were lost and dead in your trespasses and then the voice of God spoke into your life and said, receive salvation? When you did that, you were resurrected. You were no longer dead. You were made new. You experienced the power of God. Yeah. That was good. Preacher, I just don't get excited about those things. Listen, if that ain't amen, world, we would as well. Because, man, I'm going to tell you something. He wants us to experience and understand the knowledge and to live 
and spend time contemplating the surpassing greatness of his resurrection power. Maybe your faith has been shut down and slowed down lately. You know, there's some things that get in the way. You know that? That stop us, that stun us from growth. We've learned this summer that a lack of rain and too much sunlight will stunt the growth of our grass. I've learned that the army worms may be coming next, but that's another story. We've learned that. You know what can stunt your growth in Christ? Sin. Sin. You won't hear the voice of God if you've got unrepentant of sin in your life. You won't read and, and find new things, new knowledge about Jesus. You'll allow all this to be boring to you. You know another thing? I'll, I'll tell you, this one, this one probably hinders the majority of people who are Christians. And, and I'm going to tell you something. If you fall in this category, you are missing out on the blessings of God, the experiencing the power and knowledge and the wonderfulness of it. Too busy. Too busy. Preacher, I would have been there, but we had a ball game. Preacher, we would have been there, but, but we had a this, and we had a that, and we were out late last night, and we did this, and we did that. Oh, man, if Jesus would have said, I'm a little busy. I don't think I'm going to die on the cross today for you. You know, the day you were ready to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, what if those people who were there at that time said, I got other things to do. Too busy. Too busy. Oh, he goes on in this passage and he talks about in Christ and we see such symbolism that I'm not going to tear I'm not going to go as deep as I'd like to with you this morning but you know, we could do a Bible study about it and I'd love to take you just as deep as I can take you. But listen to it real quick. It says it says raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places. That means he's completed his mission and his purpose. His work is done. For above all for above all rule and authority, over power and dominion, every name that is named, not only of this age, but also in the one to come. In other words, we're talking about spiritual warfare and spiritual things. We'll talk about that more as we go through Ephesians. And then he says, And he put all things under subjection under his feet, talking about that total victory, and given him head of all things, you might want to catch this. If you're not big on church, you, you probably don't want to read this passage because you're fixing to find out something awesome about Christ in the church. It's right here in this passage. I want you to read it because if you don't read it, you're going to miss it. It says, listen to it. He, he, all, everything's under the subject of his feet and gave him, talking about Jesus, as head over all things to, to the church. Do you see that? All things to the church. To the church which is the body, that's verse 23, which is, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. I told you there's three things that, that quench experiencing the resurrection power of Jesus in your life. Sin, too busy. not having a meaningful part in the community of Christ. Not being plugged in in the local assembled members of God's church. I ain't talking about buildings. I'm talking about being more than an attender. I'm talking about being more than, than an occasional do this, do that. I'm talking about I'm talking about being plugged into the lives of the people to the left, to the right, to the front of the room, to the back of the room, to the left, to the right. I'm talking plugged in. It matters. It matters. Paul was praying for all these believers. He gave thanks because of the faith that existed among them and their love for one another. But then he prayed for them to know Christ Jesus more. 
Do you know Christ Jesus more this morning than you did yesterday? Do you have a plan for knowing him more tomorrow than you did today? Because I'm going to tell you something. Come up close and listen. If you are in Christ Jesus and you want to know him more, you will be regularly plugged in to the gathering of his saints. If there are any of those things that I mentioned that are preventing you from knowing Christ more, I ask you this morning to confess your sins to Almighty God, to repent of them, experience that forgiveness, and don't miss an opportunity going forward to plug in with God's people. Let us pray. Father God, you are awesome and mighty, and you are good. We love you. We adore you. And yes, Lord, we want to know you more. More. Oh, Father, 